Good morning and welcome to Hope for the Family with Dickness, Snowy Antonia Eden. God is good all the time. We thank God for keeping us alive to see this day which He has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The voice of victory and rejoicing is heard all the time in the tent of the righteous. Our God is good. Let us thank God for loving us the way He does. There's no other person that can love us, no other God that can love us the way our God does. And we know the God we have is our God Jehovah, the everlasting God. The beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, the God who created everything that there is, he is our God. He gave us life. We thank him for his goodness to us and for our salvation. He gave us salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we come to, before God this day, let us believe that God alone can do what he can do in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us trust God who has given us this gospel of salvation and has told us to go to the nations. He has commanded us that we should take this gospel to the entire world to tell them about the good news of the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must be busy while we are still alive to do the work of God in the name of Jesus because when we die, we can do it. After when we die, it will be the judgment. But while we are alive, we have opportunity to change and to turn from, any, uh, from the path that we are walking on to come to God. Let us examine ourselves this morning and ask God to have mercy on us in ways that we have sinned against Him. Before we start our session this morning, we want to commit everything to the hands of God and ask that the Spirit of God will take control of what we are doing right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we give you thanks. We bless you for being our God. We thank you for the way you love us. We know that we have no other God but you. Father Lord, as we come before you this morning, we acknowledge that we are sinners. We pray, Lord God, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all our sins. Renew our minds, O Lord God, and prepare us, O Lord God, to receive from you this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Jehovah God, we thank you as you have forgiven us. We pray that you give us the enablement to forgive everyone that has sinned against us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come in to help us this morning in our study of the word. Enlighten our minds and open our eyes to take the things that we need to take out from this passage today in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you because you are our God. We bless you for everything you have done for us. So we know that you have answered our prayers this day. Glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God has answered our prayers. We believe and we know that we have not prayed in vain. And we also know that we have not come before our God in vain, that when we come before him, we must believe that God is able to help us and that he's the rewarder of everyone that diligently seek him. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Our God will help us in Jesus' name. Today we are continuing with our study of the Acts of the Apostles and we are going to look at Acts chapter 22, beginning from verse, from verse 20, 24, 22 to verse 30 verse 22 to verse 30 of chapter 22 we are also going to read the first portion of chapter 23 beginning from verse 1 to 11 i'm going to read in jesus mighty name amen paul the roman citizen the crowd listened to paul until he said until he said this then they raised their voices and shouted, Read the earth of him is not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloths and flinging dust into the air, the commander ordered Paul to be taken into the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and questioned in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched out, stretched him out to flog him. Paul said to the centurion standing there, Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen? It, who hasn't even been found guilty? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commander and reported it. What are you doing, going to do? He said. This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am, he answered. Then the commander said, I had to pay 
a big price for my citizenship. But I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to question him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed when he realized that he had put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chain before the Sanhedrin. The next day, since the commander wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being accused by the Jews, he released him and ordered the chief priest and all the Sanhedrin to assemble. Then he brought Paul and had him stand before them. Chapter 23 Paul looked straight at the Sanhedrin and said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. At this, the high priest Ananias ordered those standing near Paul to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed war. You sit there to judge me according to the law, yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. Those who were standing near Paul said, You dare to insult God's high priest? Paul replied, Brothers, I did not realize that he was a high priest, for it is written, Do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. Then Paul, knowing that some of them were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, called out in the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. I stand on the I stand on trial because of my hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the assembly was divided. The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, and that there are neither angels nor spirits, but the Pharisees acknowledge, acknowledge them all. There was a great uproar, and some of them of, of the teachers of the law, who be a Pharisee, stood up and argued vigorously. We find nothing wrong with this man, they, re, they said. What if a spirit or, or an angel has spoken to him? The dispute became so violent that the commander was afraid Paul would be torn to pieces by them. He ordered the troops to go down and take him away from them by force and bring him into the barracks. The following night, the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage. As you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must testify, also testify in Rome. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our hearts, and may this word produce the fruit of righteousness in each one of us. And may we find something that we take that we take out from this word that we apply in our own situations here on earth. Something that will make us to serve the, our God with the same kind of passion that the apostle had. That despite the fact that he was passing through persecution, he stood firmly on the word of God. He did not bow down. He did not allow the fear of the people to make him to turn around from doing what God had called him to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The first session of this passage, the passages that we read today, beginning from verse 22, it told us uh, what about uh, Paul. I was brought before trial, and how they they flogged him for doing what it, for doing nothing wrong, and Paul made the commander and the centurion to know that he was a Roman citizen, and he asked them, "Is it right for you to flog me, to treat me in this way that I'm a Roman citizen?" And we found out that he was born a Roman citizen, not like the commander, the commander that bought his citizenship. He paid a lot for it. What we are going to take out of this is that we see the way the 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 commandant and the centurion, the way their attitude towards Paul changed a little because they knew that he was a Roman citizen. That's the citizenship of this world. Can we compare that to the citizenship of God's kingdom? What we get from God, from being the children of God? 
There are people out there who are going out in the name of the Lord and people do not listen to them. They treat them anyhow. But just because someone said that it was a Roman season, look at the way they treated him. They turned around and they tried, started treating him with some respect because he said it was a Roman citizen. They were afraid of what would happen to them for treating a Roman citizen in that way. We have children of God. We have a better citizenship than the world can give to us. So let us know that wherever we go, because we are the children of God, that God will go with us. That even when we are passing through persecution and people are treating us badly because of the gospel or because of the God we, we believe in and we serve, let us know that God will be with us even in the darkest part of the world, wherever we are. Because the word of God says that when we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, that God is going to be with us. That his rod and his staff will be there to protect us. So no matter what we pass through, God will be there. His grace will avail for us in every situation. He will defend us, he will fight our battles, and he will help us. In persecution, we will, we will be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter what happens, the will of God will be done. In our situations, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The, the commander did not know why Paul was being accused. He was curious. He wanted to find out that what is it? What is this thing about this man? Why, do they, why are they accusing him? And he gathered the Sanhedrin and he brought Paul before them. He wanted to know what they were accusing him of. And we saw that Paul was given the opportunity to defend himself. And Paul stood up. And the first few words he said was that in good conscience, that what everything he has done, he has done it with a good conscience before God, with a clear conscience without any fear. As he said that, and he was beginning to testify, the high priest who was there was enraged. He wasn't happy to hear that. And he told the people around him that they should slap uh, Paul on the mouth. That, and they struck him on the mouth. And Paul had boldness within him, within him, and he, and he told the chief priest that, why did you do this to me? That God will strike you too, the way you did it. And the people there said, what? Who are you? You're talking to the high priest. Why are you saying this to the high priest? And he told them that he didn't know he was the high priest. Paul showed us again that he was a person that was ready to obey whatever the, the word of God stated, said. And he quoted the scripture that the scripture said that they should obey everyone in, in position of leadership, any ruler over them. He wasn't someone that was going to go against the word. He had received the word and he knew what it was. And he knew that God was the one that will judge the rulers if they do anything contrary to his will. That it wasn't for us to fight. Some of us are institutions that when our rulers do things wrong, we just curse out of them, curse them out, say whatever we want to say about them, forgetting that God is a judge. That when we have these rulers over us, when they do things we do not understand, let us take, take it to God and let God be the judge. The rulers, they will give account to God about the things they do. It's not in our position to tear them down, to shout, to want to destroy them. No. God oversees everything that happens. And at the right time, God is going to step in to take care of his own children in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So Paul, obviously, I would say he apologized because he said he didn't know that that man was, was the high priest that told someone to, to strike him on his mouth. But however, the high priest who knew the law, violated the law, as Paul pointed out, that why will you do this to me when you know what the law is or what the law is? said that we should not do. You have just violated the law that you are preaching and that you are, that you are holding on to. You have violated it by doing what you did now to me. Let us be considerate to one another and show the love of God to the people around us. We don't lift up our hands to strike people and think that we will be justified before God. God did not give us that, that, of, uh, uh, that power over anybody. And, and if that's the way we interact with people around us, let us pray that God should help us. 
to be able to control ourselves. That there are things that we just have to give to God to take care of. So that our anger will not lead us to sin. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that God Almighty will help us to be humble in our spirit. To always reflect God in everything that we do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So when Paul was brought before the Sanhedrin, God gave him wisdom for him to discern the spirit of the different people. That there were two different groups before him. He had the Pharisees and he had the Sadducees. He knew what the Pharisees believed in because he was a Pharisee. He had, he had on to the same belief system before he met our Lord Jesus Christ. He believed in, in the resurrection from the dead. He believed in, in the angel, angels and spirits. And he knew that the Sadducees did not believe in that. So he stood and he told them that you are bringing me before trial over something that I believe in. Something that some of you here, my brothers, fellow Pharisees, you believe in. The resurrection, re, resurrection from the dead. What have I done wrong? And as soon as he said that, there was a division in the group. The Pharisees, as the Bible tested, uh, stated that, it, the Bible said that they, they argued vigorously. Because they believed in the resurrection from the dead. And they also believed in angel and spirits. And they said that, what if this man actually met with a spirit or with an angel that gave him this revelation? What can we do about it? And this caused a lot of dispute between the two groups. And they said that it was so intense, so serious, that the commander had to take Paul away from them, from the group, by force. He took him to the barrack because they were going to tear him into pieces. He showed the kind of anger and hatred he had towards Paul for doing the Lord's way, for going out to testify about the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. The commander took him to the barrack. And there in the barrack where he was, where you would think that this was the end, that Paul was not going to go anywhere again, that he was going to meet with his faith here in Jerusalem, that whatever it was that Nothing else could happen more than what he was passing through now. But right there in the barrack, God appeared, our Lord appeared to him and told him that he should take courage. That as he testified for him in Jerusalem, that's the way he would testify for him in Rome. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us may be thinking that we have come to the end of the road. That there's no other way to go. There's nothing else that we can do. That we've done everything. That we are in the, in the midst of the strongest opposition that we can ever face in, in this world, in our lives. And we are about giving up. That we can no longer do anything. But let us hear the word of God speaking to us, expressly to each one of us today. That we should take courage. That as we have testified for God where we are. As we have faithfully done the will of God, that God is taking us to somewhere else, where we will testify for him in the mighty name of Jesus. That it's not yet the end until God says it's the end. That God still has a purpose for our lives. And until God says it's the end, that's when it will be the end. Let us believe the God that has called us. That God will make great his grace to avail for us even in the most difficult times of our lives. Let us trust God and look up to Him. Let us look beyond this, the persecution, the accusation, the bad biting, the, the lie that people are the, say, t saying about us, to discredit us, to pull us down, to destroy us, to stop the work of God. Whatever we've heard, let us look beyond them and just close our ears and look up to God and say, Father, Lord, it's not yet ended. It's not yet the end until you say it's the end. That as you told the Apostle Paul in this difficult time, oh Lord God, the very difficult time that he passed through, that it should take courage, that as he testified for you in Jerusalem, that he will testify for you in Rome. Father, Lord, Visit each one of us at our most difficult times, O oh Lord God. Reassure us of your presence in our lives. Reassure us, O oh Lord God, of who you are to us. 
that you are the one that have entrusted us, entrusted this gospel to us, that we should go out to testify about the good news of salvation to the world, that you are not done yet with us. That what we are doing here now, that there's somewhere else that you want us to take it to, in the name of Jesus. Perhaps some of us are passing through difficult times, O oh Lord God, in our homes, on our jobs, in our communities, that people have gathered against us, that they want to bring us down. Jehovah God, that they will stop whatever you are trying to do in our lives. Father Lord, speak to us this day, that it's not yet the end. That whatever we are passing through, that we are going to come out of it. Because we still have a purpose for our lives, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, may your will be done in our lives. We thank you, God, for everything you have done through us. We thank you for renewing our minds this day. For opening our eyes, O Lord God, to see what you want us to do. For helping us to see beyond our circumstances, O Lord God. For looking up above to where you are leading us in the name, to, in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. You are our God. We saw, Father Lord, how the, the commander and the centurion, how their attitude towards Paul changed because they knew that he was a Roman citizen. Jehovah God, as we go out to the world, and people find out that we are your children, Jehovah God, we pray, O oh Lord God, that their attitude towards us oh Lord, will also change in the mighty name of Jesus. That they will be attentive to what the Spirit is saying to them. Concerning their salvation, Jehovah God, that they will think about where they want to spend eternity and they will turn back and repent of their sins in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Father, you are God. We trust, O oh Lord God, that you are able to do what you alone can do in our lives. That this word will go out with power. That men will hear it and they will receive it in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you God for answered prayers. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Now we have come to the end of this session with Evangelist Moyo Antonia Eden of Hope for the Family. We thank God for helping us to go through this session. I did it on my computer, but I had a little situation. So I could not um, up, uh, it download or upload the file. I decided to do it with my cell phone. I pray that this will bless you, that you will receive the power of God in whatever situation you find yourselves and believe that God is able to help you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Be blessed. We love you. God loves you most. Hallelujah. Amen.